Jahangir Malik is CEO of Muslim Aid, which is a UK-based organization. He joins us here in our Doha studios, and we're talking to you. Good to have you with us. Thank you very much. Because you've just come <clears throat> back. That's correct. Tell us what you saw. Well, I was just in Myanmar, arrived late last night, mm -hmm. and tragically, as was being reporting all over the news, um, the situation unfolding is catastrophic. It's horrendous. People are living in very, very precarious situation. The escalation of conflict from August 25th to now is having a devastating impact on the lives of the one, many that I've um, witnessed and saw and met. People and tell us what they're telling you. I mean, what are the stories? What have they experienced? And, and what, in what <clears throat> condition did you find them? I, the people are living in camps. Mm. And I, was managed, I managed to get into the Rakhine State in uh, Sitwe, which is a central part of the Rakhine State in which our offices, Muslim Aid, has been working for the last five years in Myanmar, registered to work there. So it's providing humanitarian aid assistance. Unfortunately, that aid is having to be scaled down because of the security situation that's underway at the moment. So we're not able to function normally, but we did manage to get some access, humanitarian aid assistance. I participated in the distribution myself on behalf of the organization to 500 families that were living in the camps and villages in horrendous conditions. Rain was pouring intensely, it was wet, but the whole community had come out and it was just phenomenal to see that some aid and assistance was getting out. But the need is growing by the day and you know we appeal to all to be able to get that humanitarian access and so that more aid can get to the people who need it. And obviously whenever there's any sort of uh, lots of water, concerns of waterborne diseases, Absolutely. all that sort of thing, the knock-on effect is, is quite extraordinary. And what did you see from uh, how many people are still left in those areas? Because obviously so many have fled to, over to Bangladesh. That's right. Well, the northern part of Rakhine State is currently completely isolated and we're pleading. I mean, I met with the minister uh, responsible for relief and resettlement and pleaded to get that humanitarian aid access. But naturally, the uh, security situation doesn't guarantee safety of aid workers. So it's a very tough decision to make to go to the northern part in Mundo. Although my Burmese uh, counterparts and team are there at this moment in time doing assessments, but we were, we were uh, guaranteed access or we were granted access in central, in Sitwe, and that's where we're operating at this moment. We're hoping that we can go further afield where the need is greater, but it's a work in progress, tragically, but we're doing that. Uh, tell us about the mental state of the people, people living there. I mean, do they feel that there's any hope, there's any future? At, at this moment in time, you know, they're living on whatever little bit of rations that we were able to provide in our previous aid distributions. That was over Ramadan and over uh, Eid and so forth. So whatever that was provided over the last two or three months is really having to make do. But the good thing is that people from all walks of life are coming together, working. People uh, from uh, Buddhist, Christian, Hindu, everyone's affected in one way or another so it's a very complex crisis and to paint it with Rakhine uh, and, and Muslim uh, Rohingya only I think it's slightly uh, ambiguous in that respect although the vast majority in Mundo in the northern area are Muslim and Rohingya but the reality is that many more are affected as well there's a bigger picture, it's it's a a bigger picture and, and it's it. important that we recognize that aid and assistance is coming from all walks of life one family I met their aid and assistance was coming from the local monastery and working with Muslim Aid and other organizations, we have to pull together and provide that aid assistance irrespective of where it's coming from and to get it to whoever is in need. Well, thank you for talking to us and for the work that you do and yeah. painting to us what's really happening there. Thank you.